course, I say that and then I don't speak. Yeah, I almost commented on that, but I figured, yeah, you'll speak soon. No, I kind of like the uh, the setup and the uh, the gag. Everybody then going, oh my god, oh my god, I can't hear you, I can't hear you. I learned I had to practically eat my mic here so I can sound uh, clear enough. It's a Yeti mic, and it's supposed to be good where you can just set it anywhere on the table and it picks you up with the different settings. Well, apparently not. Apparently it has to be, like, right under your teeth. <laughs> Yeah, I debated getting another mic uh, over the holidays and then thought, nah, I don't want to have to learn it. <laughs> Just use my headset. Izzy plays a lot of Call of Duty and likes sniping TJ from afar. <laughs> Darn campers. Those are the worst. <laughs> Made me quit so calm. Well, I guess we can get started. Um, I want to welcome everyone to the January meeting of the Concierge and Land User Group. This will be our first meeting of the new year. It's also our first since October because of the holidays. Uh, we were out because, I mean, Thanksgiving and then Christmas and everything. So it's good to be back. Um, I also wanted to add that just as a brief note, um, I am no longer a part of the Concierge team. Uh, but you will still have me at the meetings here. Um, I am now at the, in the land product team. So I'm no longer with Izzy and Concierge, or no longer with Fix and Concierge and with Izzy and Land. So, yep, I was stolen. I was poached. Just like an egg. But uh, I also want to, there's been actually a fair amount of news, news over the last uh, few months. Uh, so we should probably jump into it. I know there's going to be a lot of other topics to discuss here today, too. So you want to, want to hit on homesteads, Vix? Absolutely. So as you guys know, uh, we've introduced another uh, Premium Plus benefit, allowing Premium Plus subscribers, which is also new, uh, to purchase a homestead without having to uh, acquire a full region first. So that's definitely a uh, first for us. And um, I, I think, you know, Wendy and... Izzy, who are managing all the requests contained, it's been a very popular uh, uh, benefit, right, guys? Keeping you guys busy? Oh, yeah, I've built definitely. a ton of homesteads. But one yeah. thing to definitely keep in mind if you do utilize this perk is that if you downgrade from Premium Plus, either down to Premium to Plus or to a base account, uh, you can no longer keep that homestead without mm -hmm. having a full, yeah. so you'd either yeah, need like to abandon, sell, or upgrade it to a full region. So just to keep that in mind. Right. To gain a homestead as a uh, Premium Plus member, you're going to have to go through support.secondlife.com, submit a new support ticket using the land and region, and then follow it up by order private region category. Uh, homesteads cost uh, the normal fee. Uh, setup is 149 and then it includes the first 30 days. And then after that, you can expect to pay 109 per month. Uh, plus local taxes, if applicable. And let me go ahead and drop the knowledge base on how to order a private region here. So, so far, uh, we've also seen a uh, big uptick in questions regarding homesteads and support. And I, I think that's a very good thing. I say ask as many questions as you need to. Um, that's definitely why we're here for because uh, it's a brand spanking new park uh, that's opening the door to private home ownership. So uh, go ahead and use your support channels, 
uh, reach out to us. Um, you know, we're here to answer any questions. A um, couple of big things I want to mention about Homestead, um, if you guys aren't aware of them, uh, they're the same size as a full region, so you're going to get the 65,536 square meters. Um, it can hold a maximum of 5,000 prims. Um, that is not uh, eligible for the prim increase, so there is a limitation there. And also, only 20 agents are allowed inside. Uh, but the good news is events and classifieds are also... Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah, with the, uh, the premium access. Uh, events and classifieds are uh, also permitted. Um, so you can set up, uh, you know, gatherings and whatnot there, and you still have the control of the access, or excuse me, the state access and controls as you do a full region, um, although you are not allowed to sign a separate EO. So um, any questions that you're deciding on, I want to buy a homestead, or if you have others who are thinking of, you know, joining a homestead community, as we've seen, uh, reach out to us and we'll definitely answer any questions. As well as um, the Homestead uh, edition, we also uh, introduced a new membership level, which is called Simply Plus. Um, and unlike some of our other options, it um, allows you for to have 50 group spaces, a 512-meter uh, land allotment for holding a parcel on the mainland, and a 150 Linden weekly stipend. Uh, it only costs uh, $5.99 a month. It's a little bit cheaper, actually, if you do the annual. Um, and you can uh, select it from your account dashboard at secondlife.com. Same place you can adjust for premium, premium plus, and so forth. Oh, and, and also as an aside, uh, we did change the price structure for land on the mainland slightly too. Uh, we reduced the price at the 1 8th of region, uh, 81, 92 meters and higher by just a bit over 5%. Um, you can find a bit more about uh, both plus and those changes at um, this right there. It just gives a little more flexibility. Some people just wanted to be able to, to have some mainland, that kind of thing. So we're still looking at other possibilities too. Any questions or comments so far? Feel free to toss them in. I hear you on that, Sassy. I, I honestly really do. Oh, definitely. Definitely, definitely, definitely. One might say it was double plus ungood. Or not so plus. Yeah, I think that's going to be a big part of it, Sassy, is the group bump. I know there's never, ever enough group group uh, spaces. Wendy, be careful. You're getting really close to that. These kids today. Back in my day, Izzy, we had to walk uphill from the telehub both ways in system shoes. <laughs> With grenade terraforming. Oh, goodness. When A tours ruled the earth. Um, Asha, I don't know. Um, we're fairly limited on what we do with open spaces. 
Um, but uh, I'll toss it up and see uh, if anyone salutes. So I'll put that in the hopper. Open spaces make for excellent additional water regions, but they have, uh, I mean, the price is, what, $60 a month? You get an open space? Correct. But the print count and the agent count, yeah, it, it's definitely, if a homestead is building out a full region, an open space is building out the homestead. That's a good way to look at it, I say. Gorgeous, not currently an option, but and it's another thing that we could definitely bring up. Yeah, we can always kick it upstairs. I think there's actually been some discussion on that, Sassy, but I, I don't obviously have any information. I don't know what's been said, but um, it's not a bad idea, really. I know there's still a lot of discussion. I mean, we have the four levels now. There's still discussion going on about ad additions and changes, like we already said, some of the, the additions so far with uh, Homestead. So there's definitely, you know, there's definitely still some discussion going on. So I'm sure we'll see other changes down the pipeline. Never heard of that before. Group name changes. Interesting. Not a bad idea. That sounds like a feature request. Like really, put that that, in. that's a. I don't know that, the feasibility of it, but yeah. I've just honestly never heard that up. That uh, that idea. Yeah, before. that would that would be a good option. Mm -hmm. And easy is that two million dollars to your private account? <laughs> your it just might be, you know, the the right Shell bribe company. at the right time. Bitcoin. <laughs> oh no, Bitcoin's going down in price. I'm not going to play there. Falling faster than a meta avatar without legs. Amy, I'm not sure, uh, but if you wanted to uh, just put that in a ticket, we would. If we couldn't come up with the answer, we would. See if uh, there's another team that would be able to at least address it. Now you're welcome. Gorgeous, gorgeous. I know that that's actually something that we've uh, kicked around a bit too. So I obviously don't have any information on it, but I know that that's something that is being looked at, has been looked at. That's another option. Uh, kind of having like a full region store that you just uh, archive, then load up. Interesting. Yeah, the closest that we've got to that is really talking about event regions where we have an instancing mm -hmm. service, but it's not really yeah. what you're talking about. But that's definitely a great thing to add as possibly a feature request for that. Especially if, like you said, you what you had like seasonal builds that you wanted to rotate. biggest concern that I would have uh, with it is on the if everything in the build wasn't yours and there were some no transfer <laughs> items that you then transferred or you uh, sorry there were some no copy objects that you then sold and then by rolling it or into that new instance you've now created a duplicate so there'd be some things that would have to get ironed out. Yeah, these are great ideas. Vix, you're writing them down, right? Yep. <laughs> if Vix isn't, I am.
Yeah, we talk a lot about uh, submitting feature requests. These are excellent ideas. And if we can be the facilitators and making sure you guys are sending it to the right team, um, then I think we've done our job because we do have a team that reviews the, uh, the ideas. You know, we can't promise if it, they're ever implemented, but they do, they get a proper review. I really like that group name uh, change. You're here. Thank you, Izzy. All right, we can move on to the uh, next topic. Then there's no other questions on what we've covered so far. We're going to talk about London homes for a little bit. We've recently done some refreshing on our London home offerings, adding open plans to our traditional homes while adding more options for our houseboats. Uh, you can find these in all of our current lending home offerings uh, right here. Plug in the link. We're still offering our Premium Plus members the option to choose their lending home. Um, if you find an available home and are a Premium Plus member, all you have to do is submit a support ticket using the land and region lending homes category and include a slurl to the home in question. Uh, basically what that entails is you are free to roam around in the world. Uh, you see a home in a community you like, you can stand right there, copy the location and drop that in a ticket and the mainland team will assess to see if it's eligible to be assigned to you. It's a huge benefit, I think, uh, versus going through the selection page, which is still around for our uh, premium residents. Um, but you're at the mercy of the selection page. And uh, although you are given five choices uh, per 24 hour period, uh, sometimes you just want to find a home next to your friend. And uh, this is a, a huge benefit to do that. You can go to your friend's house and say, all right, let me see if this one next door is available. Stand right there, plug it in the ticket, and we'll, we'll take a look. I actually took care of um, two people that submitted tickets yesterday uh, that uh, wanted the parcels next to each other for Linden Homes. And Sassy, that was me teasing. That's a wonderful benefit. We've talked about it for years. And we've, we've been we've been asked that question, am I able to choose a Linden Home in World? And uh, before then, we we just had the selection page. So this is, I think, a very, very nice way to uh, you know provide a benefit for those who upgrade to the Premium Plus. And we've seen it uh, used in you know, residents all the time. They're asking, you know, how do I do this? Well, you know, now you get to browse in world, go through all the communities. And we talk a lot about the communities here, uh, how they're handcrafted. They're so unique. Um, it, it's, you know, sometimes it could actually be tough to find the right home. Uh, but now you have the freedom to just explore and see exactly where you want to live. Maybe you like living on the corner of a block. Maybe you like living in the, you know, in the center. Maybe you want to be next to a uh, community center. Uh, so this is, this is that opportunity. And also to keep in mind, because I know somebody here will probably at least be thinking about it, we are looking at automating it, so therefore it'll happen a lot faster for you, so therefore your the home of your dreams doesn't get grabbed via the system uh, before your ticket gets responded to. Yeah, that's been a question too. Uh, our residents said, well, I like this home, but I don't want to give up my Victorian home because it took me forever to get this one there. Uh, so yeah, that's a, good, uh, that's a good update. Thank you, Izzy. your question, Sassy? Let me scroll up. Oh. Yeah, I'm not sure. That you're talking about, like, the uh, inner workings of the home we're building out? There's also a bunch of uh, marketplace add-ons for Linden Homes now.
while we're talking about homes and land, did everyone get a chance to check out the new land page? What do you guys think of it? I'm biased, Fix. I'm a fan of it. Yeah, it's very, very easy to read now. And uh, the core functionality is still pretty much the same, but you can see as far as the the user experience, um, there's definitely been an upgrade. Hats off to the team. Well, Adam, you just haven't found the right home yet, that's why. And it really just depends. I really think the biggest draw, in my opinion, of the Linden Homes is the community around you. And I would also add that one of the things that's nice about Second Life is that we have lots of choices. So if you don't like the Linden Homes, if there's something about you don't like, um, there is mainland and you can do that. You can have an estate region. You can rent land somewhere. Um, that's the nice thing. You don't have to do one specific thing. We like giving options. Yeah, I think I've seen it before that uh, the Linden Home communities uh, begin emulating uh, real life neighborhoods where you have people walking down the street. Uh, you know, there, we did the trick or treating last year. Um, you, you start seeing the little stuff that probably wouldn't have happened with the the older uh, regions with the Linden Homes. Now you're seeing, you know, curated communities, people really um, taking an investment in their properties, actually building it out. Um, staying there, you know, exploring a little bit, uh, meeting neighbors. So that's been really cool to see. Yeah, the other day, actually, I think it was last week, I saw somebody walking their dog in one of the Linden Home communities, and I reminded them to make sure to pick up after their dog. <laughs> that's getting a little too granular. <laughs> no, not that gorgeous. Um, the, uh, uh, the other thing you'd mentioned there, I forgot now. London homes are still limited to one per person. I don't see that changing for quite some time, only because we've always got people that are upset that they can't get a particular kind of Linden home, let alone a specific Linden home. So until we have an abundance of each type to where that isn't happening, I don't see them opening up multiple for each person. But I may or may not have alts that have different kinds of Linden homes, so therefore I can go to my beach house, I can go to my boat house, I can go to my big Victorian, etc. For coffee, unfortunately, I don't have those numbers right now. And Kess, that's actually something that's always been um, something that's been thought about. I know the Linden Homes has kind of taken the focus uh, in lieu of uh, saleable water uh, attached to the mainland. However, we've got a bunch of Linden home areas that are attached to the mainland area that have saleable areas. So in some ways we're doing that. I also wanted to add in here, um, just as we go along, uh, talking about uh, 
some of the things that we've been adding and so forth. Because we did have a really large um, uh, year in review blog post that we put out uh, at the beginning of the month, uh, which is here, oh, which talks about some of our, <laughs> uh, which talks about some of the um, achievements and big news from the last year, some of the projects we've been working on, and also, of course, a lot of the projects we have in the pipeline for this year, which is some really interesting stuff in there. Um, uh, we'll certainly be discussing some of these a bit more detail in the coming months, uh, some of the new avatar customization improvements, uh, new user experience upgrades, uh, and the first peek at our mobile Second Life experience, which I'm certain that Adam will be glad to hear about, and a whole lot more. Yeah, that's part of it, uh, Sassy, with the, uh, uh, the new rendering pipeline. I'm actually not sure on that, Sassy. The greatest thing that I can say about the mobile stuff, as far as I'm concerned, is the fact that they really are spending the time to make sure that when it comes out, it comes out well, rather than just kind of releasing something quickly uh, that then will turn people off from it. So it's all good in my book. Kestrel. At current, there aren't any, but that's but never say never. Um, you know, it's really um, is there a demand for it? There's an awful lot of abandoned land out there on the current mainland, so maybe there is, maybe there isn't. Um, but again, never say never. Who's to say? I like that idea, Sassy. Yeah, that could be an interesting feature request. There could be some issues with it, but the Devs would probably have a better handle on what those might be. Any other questions, concerns that anyone wants to bring up? Feel free to uh, hop on in.
I actually have a question that um, is more related to to mainland, I guess. Um, I, I want to know if there's anything the Lindens can do to assist you in building a community. For instance, I live in the Sea of Fables area, or I have mainland there, and um, I would like to find a way to connect with the other people who um, have land in that area that allow visitors and make a community. And I'm, I made a group and I'm going to go around and drop off note cards to people, see if they're interested in stuff from the landowners and, and land renters and stuff in that area. But do you guys have anything to assist in this process? Fix, do you want to go ahead and answer Ash, and I'll get uh, that last question? That'd be great. Thank you. I'm still uh, typing a little bit out uh, for Ash. Sure thing. Um, I would say as far as community, I think you're already going at about uh, probably the best way to do it. Of just directly reaching out, talking with people in your area, and seeing if they want to do something together. Uh, you know, maybe some of them will be receptive, maybe some won't. Um, Doing the legwork is probably the best way, unfortunately. Um, I'm not sure there's a lot that we would have specific for that, um, but we'd be certainly willing to, you know, take a look and see what we might have. I know I've seen a couple of really very cool um, mainland communities pop up that are all resident, uh, whether it's people that already live there or people that were attracted to certain elements um, that have kind of cropped up over the last couple of months. Uh, the Moorcroft uh, folks uh, on Sansar and um, Seogio Shire uh, down on uh, uh, the Geogio continent, um, a couple of others. It's been kind of neat to see that sort of grow on its own um, and really take on a life of its own. So if we do become a community and we need some sort of resource from from Linden Labs, say we need a small 512 parcel or something like that to put up some sort of global information for uh, people or something like that, is uh, is there somebody, how, how do we go about requesting something like that from the Lindens? You can always put in a support ticket on it. Um, to who however, do that? <laughs> uh, land and region, other land would probably be the, the catch-all category for that. Okay. But um, I would suspect that you'd probably be quicker served and maybe even better served to look at doing it as a group-owned parcel and like purchasing an abandoned land parcel, for example, and um, all contributing to it and making it a community-based thing. It's probably going to be the better bet. Or if you don't want to add more land, if each of you gives up, you know, a 512 toward uh, that group owned land, something like that. Prokofi, you said you uh, wanted to be in line for questions. Pardon my silence, I was reading. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you're right. A lot of that's going to be, a lot of things with the Bonnie bots are, uh, you know, there's governance involved, things like that. I know that they are being looked at and the data that's being collected is being looked at. Um, I know that uh, Patch actually did write something up on the forums. Um, 
about what's going on with some of those. And yeah, it might be nice to see some sort of marking you know, difference to them. Um, that might be a possibility. But we'll see. I know the things are being discussed. So, yeah. But yeah, that's an interesting idea. I don't really think we have any uh, more information on the hubs concept yet as it's still being uh, developed. Uh, so we're kind of waiting for more information just like you guys are. Yeah, what is he said? Uh, we don't have we don't have the information on that yet. When we do, we'll share it. Blue would be nice for Kofi. They ended up. I know that Firestorm puts uh, those of us who work for the lab in blue. So who knows? I'm not a bot. Something for sure. Because uh, I'm not sure if you are. Are you able to uh, actually hear us in voice? Oh, that's probably why <laughs> we're wondering. <laughs> Okay, we'll we'll let's we'll type it out. For oh, now. great! Yeah, I can type All it right. out. Thank you, Andy. So we got about twenty some odd minutes, and we have a few more uh, topics that we wanted to cover. Uh, and one of them is our upcoming Valentine's uh, Day event, as I'm sure many of you are aware. Um, when we come close to February, uh, Valentine's Shop and Hop becomes a thing. Uh, this year, it's going to be opening up February 3rd. It's a Friday, and it's going to be running through Sunday, February 19th. And uh, you can also look forward to some special Valentine's themed last names. Yep. Return of the Hug and or Dunk Linden. Did we change that? I, was, I thought it was always uh, both. Interesting. Did we get rid of Huggling in at one point? No, no. But, Not that I'm but it's coming back for this year. <laughs> Once again, just like last year. Did we do the COVID thing? <laughs> Six feet away. <laughs> I'll wear my mask. <laughs> uh, you can expect some other special surprises as well, um, as we usually uh, roll out the red carpet for uh, Valentine's Day. And I'm not sure if we have a uh, link yet. Do we? Yet, but soon. Trademark. <laughs> oh, we're always wrong. We have a massive list of names gorgeous uh, that come through, and we're always plucking out new ones. Uh, I think we see more new ones than recycled well, ones, to be honest. Sure, I'll be. Of course you can. Hey, Big Boat. Thanks for stopping by. That sounds like a good feature request. If you could make a Jira on it, that would be lovely sassy. Yeah, this group is on fire. That's like the sixth good one already. Yeah, I've liked I've there's been a lot of good stuff today. 
we can tell the review team that uh, they have their work cut out for them in the next few weeks, right? Because everyone's going to be sending these in? Because everyone knows how to send them? You know, once you uh, log into uh, Jira, uh, I mean, um, you'll see the options right away once you begin selecting. I, I think, let me, I'm going to dig around here. I'm going to see if we have a page I can walk you through it. I know we had a video at one point. Uh, it became a little outdated. Um, but let me do some uh, digging here. Maybe I can find you a, uh, uh, a guide. Welcome, of course. Albane, definitely uh, something that we try to keep on our radar about the microparcels. Um, a few things uh, specifically about it is we won't set a microparcel for sale to somebody that doesn't own land uh, in the region uh, or at the very least, or hopefully um, adjoined land. Um, so if you do see some, you can definitely report uh, those microparcels because we definitely want to look into how they're being created, who's actually doing it and such. So uh, that's definitely something to either submit a support ticket on or uh, submit an in-world abuse report. Uh, so that way we can go ahead and keep on top of it. Of course, we do try to join microparcels whenever we find them, you know, into other abandoned land. Uh, and of course, if you see um, microparcels and you own land in that particular region, you could always asked to purchase them to swallow them up. I found it. I know it was a recent thing that came up. Kyle Linden, um, part of the QA team, uh, sat down with uh, Strawberry and um, gave a play-by-play -play on how to submit the JIRA. Must watch. Absolutely. Wendy's just itching to tell us what the new last names are going to be. It's right there. She's like, Ugh. oh, I am. I absolutely am. But they actually aren't fully approved yet, so I can't. The, the news will go out soon enough. That's all I'm saying. Yes, Ash, they, they do apply. Um, they apply to Derek and Patch. Got about 15 minutes left, so if you have any other uh, questions or comments, by all means, jump on in. Hey, Shatter. Uh, let me try to answer your question. I, I like that idea, but I think that might step on the toes of the premium residents who own homes as well. 
even if it's a small home, um, I can see some potential conflict there uh, as they're saying, wait, I'm paying for this and the free gets this. Um, it, I mean, it is another great idea. This has been the meeting of great ideas and I would say definitely send it in um, and we'll have it reviewed. Uh, but I could see some potential uh, conflict between um, home, you know, uh, the premium levels that are given homes and, and free that's also given a home. But I'm sure maybe, you know, maybe something could be worked out where, um, you know, the home is only, yeah, I don't know, <laughs> but it's a good idea. Let's get the Amon review team. <laughs> And uh, Prokofi, yeah, um, that issue has been spotted and it is being worked on. There's a fix coming soon for it. Um, so we're aware of it and we're looking at it. See if we can get that fixed up. This is all scrolling so fast, it may have been addressed and I may have just missed it. But it seems that um, our premium premium plus status is available. That's that's financial information it is kind of been available. Uh, there's some kind of uh, call that people can can um, make to see what our status is, whether it's basic premium or premium plus. And, and that's really kind of private information. Is that being looked at? Yes, uh, we touched on that before. Um, there's also a, uh, a form link before uh, above um, which Patch addressed it. So it is something that we are aware of, um, and it is being looked into. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. I do know that we do put a uh, disclaimer on there for new users to say some of, some of what does do with their names uh, when they join, but that might be a good idea. Well, what is he just said? Sorry, Wendy. I oh, know, quite all right. So I say it's kind of like people that first start up their YouTube channel not realizing what that channel name could be. Yeah, I, I usually use a, a, a herbal tea to deal with that.
Albane, uh, do you have voice, Albane? Because I think that uh, Izzy already did discuss that. I love that idea, and I think we can probably um, get that actioned. I'll go ahead and send that up, um, putting on, at least on this page here. Um, that covers all of the user groups, um, because I'm pretty sure all the groups also, they, they also discuss in voice. Um, so I will see if we can get some wording on there to uh, say we answer primarily in voice, and uh, if you need help, setting up voice, maybe we can also drop a link on, because uh, uh, we also have a knowledge base on uh, getting voice up. That's a, that's a great idea. Thank you. It's OK. I have the voice now. This is Albain speaking. My, um, also, excuse yeah, me, but I am French. Then I don't always uh, understand what you say, because you're speaking maybe too fast for me. Then I try. OK, I come back one second, please, if you allow me on the subject about those obelisks. Uh, I had a problem with that, because I had to abandon or to sell land, because my tenants were refusing to stay because of those obelisks invading everywhere and bothering everybody. And I don't find normal, because if I read the toss, it is said that you can't have structures higher than eight meters. I was one time putting one sign higher than that to sell. I was selling a land, and it was removed by, by Linden. Okay, I understand that. Then why those people are allowed to raise those things everywhere? Where to invade all sharks and now the other continents without any reaction. That is not normal. They destroy the mainland. I am landscaper. I'm working on the mainlands every day and I see them everywhere. And that is a, that is a pity. I don't attack the people doing that. I just say they should consider they are not alone on the mainlands. We are community and they destroy the experience of all the others. This is what I have to say. I'm actually conf uh, confused on something you said earlier, so I want to clarify it. Are you saying that if somebody has, uh, say, a, a, a 16 by 16 um, 
or whatever, a very teeny parcel, and they put something obnoxious on it, like um, there's one near our park um, that has um, just like this really bright fluorescent color that goes up about 100 meters, um, that you will remove those? Or are you saying that if the land's unowned, you'll, you'll um, make it so it's not a small piece? I didn't quite understand Teresa. what you were saying two different situations but with similar responses so if someone creates a small parcel like a four by four which is a 16 meter parcel um, and is using it in like an ad farm type of a capacity putting something obnoxious there and setting it for sale um, to try to get you to purchase it at a, a really high rate or whatever that's definitely abuse reportable um, and we'll look at it a, a lot of times we'll reclaim it and investigate the person that's doing it um the other is some people in a way of griefing in a way of causing trouble or whatever will buy up uh, some land and then break it up into tiny little 16 meter parcels just to be problematic or like somebody else mentioned they'll buy like a 1200 meter parcel but they only wanted 1024 so then they separate the rest of it out in uh, 16 and 32 meter parcels so it really depends but if you see um those tiny little parcels if they're abusive definitely submit them uh, as an abuse report if they're not being abusive you could go ahead and send them as an abuse report or send them as a uh, land and region other land issue uh, and we'll look at see um, why it was created sometimes it's as simple as somebody only wanted 1024 but they found the parcel they loved uh, that was slightly bigger bought it and trimmed off what they didn't want and that's not necessarily a problem um, but we are, don't have a problem looking into it and seeing what the cause was does this person have a history of doing so and what should be the next step in that regard i think you just answered a different question than the one i asked let me try rephrasing it i'm sorry i wasn't clear um there next to mount campion park there's a uh four by four parcel that has this giant it's not for sale but it just has this giant obnoxious thing which just really ruins the park view that sticks way up in the air and it's just this little teeny parcel they don't own any other land near it is something like that removable if it's a yard or because it's mainland and they can do whatever they want and it's not for sale uh there's nothing that can be done that's what my question is the governance team would have to investigate that to see whether it's actionable or not. Um, in some instances, it is actionable, uh, and in some instances, it isn't actionable. It depends upon where and how it's breaking our terms of service based on uh, what's actually being done. So I would look at the terms of service and see you know, what you believe it's actually breaking and put that in your abuse report when you file it. Um, so that way, because sometimes governance might go ahead Head and look at something and not be thinking along the same line that you're thinking. Um, so make sure that you put in there, hey, I believe it's breaking uh, the terms of the service with regards to this or this or this, uh, and they'll definitely take a look at it. Well, I guess that's my question. If they have a micro parcel just to create an ice store, is that breaking terms of service? That could potentially be, but I want to just stress here that we're not the governance team. So okay. Izzy, myself, and Vix really can't speak to specifics on that. I did put a link up a little bit ago that is the uh, the policy on ad farms from our wiki, uh, and that could give you some background on it. Uh, the governance person that's here might have a little more background as well, but it's not something that we can directly say, okay, this specific thing is an abuse or isn't an abuse. It sounds like it might be from my experience, but I'm not governance, so I really couldn't say. Okay. But there is, I mean, it's worth going through the effort of ARing it. It won't just automatically get ignored. Yeah, I would definitely because, say it's worth the effort. Because I've been told before, well, mainland has no rules, so people can do whatever they want. That's not entirely true. Because there are definitely things that, you know, that fall under the general toss that people can't do on the mainland. Um, you know, so... I would definitely think that that's worth uh, reporting at the very least. Okay, thank you.
just for your information, I sold absolutely quite all my lands on main lands because of that problem, because it was really becoming a, 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 a break to my business. My tenants were going away one after the other. Then I stopped and I went to estates, which I regret because I love the mainlands. They are amazing. But one more time, I would love that Linden take care way more about the life of the people there, not letting a little group destroying them. Like when I see, for example, a region cut in 10,000 pieces of 1,024, 512, uh, that is terrible. And they sell that at a, a cheap price and they keep the best ones on the border at a high prices. That is very, very bad speculation and that is destroying the, the mainlands. Uh, if you look at the map, you will have a lot of examples. I don't want to give names here. You know them as well as me, even better. But please look at the map, try to, to, to do something about this. The, 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 the grid, the mainlands are really being destroyed. And I see that month after month, and it is very sad. Kind of like governance type with their typing. Um, we're actually out of time, but I want to make sure that that gets addressed before we head out. I think if it is not the subject of the meeting tonight, it should be maybe find to organize a meeting with the landlords, the people like uh, Timo Daeli or Prokofineva, even me because I was there, having lands on the mainlands and you listen to them what they have to say because we live there, we work there, we contribute to make Second Life alive. And uh, I think it should be interesting to hear what the people have to say about that. We are working in the way to preserve Second Life, to preserve the mainlands. And we really would love to be heard by you to, to, to help to that, 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 uh, that maintenance really fine of the mainlands. It's definitely a fine point and everything. The only thing is, is Wendy, Vix, and I aren't in any position to go ahead and address a governance type of a situation. I definitely empathize and I believe that you have uh, valid points to bring up. We just don't have the forum to do so because our positions aren't in that particular right. area. Add though that governance is addressed, governance for Linden is addressing some of this uh, in text. So I would recommend uh, hearing what they have to say because it's going to be a lot closer to what you may need than what we can say. Amy, not currently, um, but uh, as I text uh, put out, um, oftentimes we do have a, uh, a guest appearance here from uh, uh, Rep from Governance, as we did today. But again, it, it is not the, uh, the focal point of our meetings here. We try to focus more on news and events uh, related to uh, land and region and uh, any questions you guys have, you know, related to that. I need to go ahead and uh, jump over to something else. So it was great talking with all of you. I hope we were able to answer um, most of the questions. I know at a couple of points, the scroll was going through so quickly that if I missed anybody, I do apologize. Uh, but I really hope that we were able to handle most of it. And I know with the governance stuff, it gets very frustrating uh, when we can't answer it. But we do try our best to answer the parts that we can to the best of our ability.
Uh, I'll just say this was a very engaging meeting. Thank you, everyone, for bringing your questions, uh, your energy, and um, we hope to see you next month. Have a wonderful month, everybody. And thank you, Timo. Absolutely, Kestrel. You can have all the bears. <laughs> if anybody wants a bear from me, just go ahead and send me an instant message. Yeah, send yeah, some send me IMs. Message. We'll get them to you. And, um, you know, we'll be back here last, next month, um, as always. And um, if you have a problem between then, you have a question, um, hit us up. We'll do what we can. We'll at least point you in the right direction. So take care, all.